WRC10 was developed by French studio Kyloton and it released on other platforms last year, but finally the Nintendo Switch version is, um, ready. Being the official game of the WRC, it features the 2021 World Rally Championship stages, all 12 of them, and with it being almost 50 years since the World Rally Championship started, this game acts as a celebration. We'll predominantly focus on the Nintendo Switch performance as well as any gameplay changes from WRC9. I'm Mark Walker and welcome back to Switch Up. Does WRC 9 completely revitalized rally games on the Nintendo Switch, or is this engine completely exhausted? Well, let's find out. As you can see, the game is absolutely beautiful, from thick, dense shrubbery to the real-time reflections and shadows, only that's not Switch footage. Ouch, that's PlayStation 5. This is what the Switch looks like. Unfortunately, the proprietary KT engine just does not scale well for the Nintendo Switch. Visually, it looks appalling. Texture quality is very low. The strange shimmering we saw on previous iterations has made a return to some foliage, but everything from the character models to the lighting and the shadows, every single aspect from a visual standpoint is just poor on the Switch, but, and this is where there is one glimmer of hope, frame rates. It's locked out to 30 frames per second and maintains that for 99% of the gameplay experience. Performance is similar in handheld mode, although there are some elements of small text which may become an issue if you're on the Switch Lite. I didn't see an option to increase text size. Then there are the load times. Load times are also quite long here. The engine itself is incredibly sophisticated, handling real-time physics, and is in fact used as an R&D project, licensed and used for many real-world automotive applications. A large chunk of your time though won't actually be spent racing in this game. The overhauled career mode takes place from your base of operations, where your staff will be busy moving from area to area, but here frame rates drop significantly, and it feels very stuttery. The same goes for when you enter rally stages, the area which you'll be getting ready and changing your tyres chugs along at around about 12 frames per second. For me, the visuals, although performing well, just don't cut the mustard when it comes to visual quality. They score 10 out of 20. Audio fares much better. Left three into right five still has a couple of issues. For one, the fidelity of the main tutorial voice didn't seem quite right. Or schedule a rest event. As if either the sample quality or the bitrate had been lowered. See what you think, could just be me. Engine sounds are all very realistic though, and the ambient noise of the car is excellently reproduced. Your co-pilot is able to offer you guidance at every turn, but may also interject with a slightly awkward cheer or comment on the recent car crash you had. It's nice to have this further level of detail, but its delivery leaves a little bit to be desired. Audio scores 15 out of 20. On to the most important part, and that's the gameplay and controls. Firstly, you'll be pleased to hear that you can completely customize the control scheme to allow for the right analog stick to be used for granular control. There's nothing worse than the switch racers, where you can simply accelerate with the right trigger and brake with the left, and all precision is essentially lost. Here though, you can create custom profiles and remap absolutely everything. Focusing on the career mode, the developers aimed to not only make the experience much more realistic, they also wanted to make it more accessible. To do this, they allow the player to tweak the difficulty on the fly before every event. I'd say this is a good thing, because even for experienced racing players, WRC 10 is difficult, and it takes a while before you realise it's not about putting the pedal to the metal, it's much more strategic than that. Now, career mode is split into several different areas. The calendar has seen a number of roster updates, including some historically accurate events, which will have you play through famous rallies. They've added into these a number of new vehicles, such as the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 5, of course the 97 Subaru Impreza, and they brought back quite a few as well from WRC 9. There is tons of content, 120 stages in total, and they're spread across 13 different countries. And once you've customised and created your own character and co-pilots, it's up to you to plan out your schedule, gain the attention of sponsors and impress 
impress them with your driving and then use the research and development area which essentially turns the game into an RPG to improve every aspect of not only your car but also the many staff that you can employ. Now staff are managed slightly differently. They'll not only have a skill they'll also have a character trait which will impact their abilities as well as a price tied to them. If the thought of going through emails and having to reply and pay bills doesn't appeal to you then the simulation aspects of WRC 10 may not be for you. They really have gone intricate with the level of detail here. The racing itself doesn't feel hugely different to the previous entries in the series but it's fair to say it's slightly less forgiving. Thankfully though the aforementioned difficulty sliders allow you to tailor the experience to your own ability so there is enjoyment to be had here. The game even makes you go through a test after which it recommends different settings. These may be the ABS or the steering assist and I guess it essentially says you're either good enough or you need those things. Each race will have a specific objective as well as a medium and long term objective that you can set yourself which will net you some hefty rewards if you can achieve them. Race segments are indicated with a bar on the left of the screen giving you a quick visual indicator as to how you're doing. If you leave the track on purpose or by mistake you can hold down the X button to reset at the cost of a penalty. And you'll notice in those historic races, the audience are a little bit too close, indicative of how health and safety standards have changed. But if you touch any audience member, well, you respawn and there's a time penalty added. This isn't GTA after all. Visual quality issues do affect the overall racing experience though. The pop-in is so extreme at times, so as to distract you from what you should be looking at and has the potential to cost you a race. Even more perplexingly, I went back to watch Glenn's review of WRC 9 and I don't know if it's just my eye but it looks better than WRC 10 on Switch. It's to its credit that the career mode is so incredibly in-depth and engaging. There's so much opportunity for customization and fit in different tires and tweaking the ratios of gears. And then as you work through the different days of a rally, you'll have to balance every element to try and get the most out of your car, all the while paying out to get it repaired and then successful or not taking your rewards spending those points to unlock new skills and abilities and going at it again. The improvements to the career mode are quite evident and they're what elevate this series above its contemporaries. There's more customization now for you to tweak your team, your own colors, and you'll find daily and weekly online challenges, meaning that you can compete with the world, which is a nice improvement. Overall, the gameplay for me scores 16 out of 20. It's slightly hindered by those visual issues, but controls are excellent and allow you to tweak absolutely everything, including dead zones and sensitivities if you want to use those analogs for acceleration. Control score 18 out of 20. Clocking in at 14.3 gigs and retailing at £44.99 or your regional equivalent, it's certainly a premium price. But is it a premium package? Well, clearly, from the visual aspect, no. But from a content standpoint, WRC 10 is absolutely jam packed, with four new rallies from 2021, including Estonia, Croatia, Belgium, and Spain, the six historic rallies that I mentioned, as well as 120 special stages, 52 official teams, and 20 legendary cars. Cars, fans are going to absolutely lap it up and there's hundreds of hours of content here. On balance though with the technical issues I would give value 16 out of 20. What we have then with WRC 10 is a 50th anniversary. If you're after a handheld, fully fledged, customizable career WRC experience with the most realistic rallying on Switch, then WRC 10 is the way to go. However, if you're looking for the best racer on Switch when it comes to visuals and overall feel, this wouldn't be my pick. It gets an overall Switch up score of 75%. Thanks to all of you that watched the channel. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Let me know down in the comments what you think of those visuals. A big thanks to our patrons who helped us get over 100. Amazing. And remember, you can still save 10% using code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg. So you can save 10% on all of your eShop games. All that's left to say, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it SWITCHUP. Cheers, guys. See ya!